Let's look at something called total internal reflection. This is a very important part of refraction, and it happens only a very specific way. Well, for total internal reflection, this only works when light is going from one material to another, but the first material is more dense than the other. So from air to water, you don't get total internal reflection because the air is less dense than water. Uh, from water to air, you would get it because the light is traveling from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. So a typical one would be a diamond. If light is traveling from diamond to air, you would get total internal reflection at a certain angle. So let's look and see how this happens. When light shines from one material, let's say this is diamond into air, the light would normally go in a straight line and continue on in that path. But because it's going into another material, it's going to bend. So in this case, it goes down and it's going to refract. And when it refracts, it refracts away from the normal. And this angle here is the angle of incidence from the normal. It's not going to go continue in a straight line. It's going to refract away from the normal. So my refracted ray is there, um, away from the normal. If I increase the angle of incidence, now I bend the ray so it's going at a little bit bigger angle here. It's going to refract away from the normal. So instead of following its regular path here, it's going to refract more. If this is 20 degrees, this might be 30. If this is 40 degrees, this might be 50. You'd have to calculate it using the formula in the last video. So I increase the angle. Instead of going in a straight line there, it's going to go here. There's my angle of refraction. You might see what's happening. As this angle gets bigger, I can go from 0, 1, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way almost to 90 degrees here. So I have a lot of room for this ray. I can bend it even further and have it coming from over here. But I'm running out of room here. If this is 20 and this is 30, and this is 40 and 50, what if this gets to 70? This might be like 85 degrees. I'm running out of room. This is only 90 degrees in this right angle here. So I get to the point where we call this the critical angle, C, where the light shines in at such a great angle, the angle of refraction I calculate is 90 degrees, meaning the light ray basically goes along the surface like that. What's really happening is transitioning from refraction to reflection. As this angle gets bigger, you start to get a little bit of reflection, lowercase r. So at 20 degrees, this might be 30. At 4 degrees, this might be 50. At 70 degrees, this is 89 degrees. It's running out of room. So it's starting to reflect. When this is 90 degrees, when you calculate that as 90 degrees, it's all reflected. That's why we use total internal reflection. The entire light ray basically bounces off the surface, and you have the law of reflection take over. If this is 75 degrees, then this will be 75 degrees. I haven't drawn it quite right, but you get the idea. This is 75, this is 75. It's totally reflected. That means this surface here, instead of the light traveling from diamond to air, it's stuck inside the diamond. It's refer reflected inside the diamond. This is acting like a mirror. If I take a block like this, a clear block, the light doesn't totally internally reflect when it's going from air into the block. The outside surface will never act like a mirror. But if I look inside, what's going on inside the block? I look in the block and I'm at a steep angle. I'm at an angle where I'm past the critical angle. And as a result, the top surface of this block is acting like a mirror. The light is trapped. Any light coming in the block is reflected off the top and back out. This is a useful property. We use it for um, sending signals along telephone lines with optical fiber. If you have an optical fiber, a piece of glass, and the light signal, the information is encoded into light, it goes through the tube, it hits the tube, you draw normal, it's past the critical angle, it will be totally reflected back into the tube and continue along that way. And it'll just continue to bounce and it won't come out of the glass tube because it's totally reflected. So total internal reflection is useful. You might even notice it at home when you have an aquarium. If you look through the aquarium, you can see out the back of the aquarium. But if you look at a very steep angle, you look inside your aquarium, the back of the aquarium starts to look like a mirror. So if you look through the side of the aquarium, 
into, trying to look out the back of the aquarium, it might act like a mirror. That's when you pass that critical angle and you get total internal reflection. 